Africa is often overlooked in many historical narratives, with the focus instead often placed on the histories of European, Asian, or Middle Eastern empires. However, the African continent boasts a rich and complex history, characterized by the rise of powerful empires that played important roles in shaping the continent's destiny and influencing the broader world. The history of Africa is a tapestry of diverse cultures, civilizations, and empires that have risen and fallen over millennia. Some of these empires are well known today to Africans, while others have fallen into oblivion. In this comprehensive exploration, we will embark on a journey through time to uncover the stories of some of the great African empires from their beginnings to their eventual decline. Also, as a way of supporting our efforts, hit the like button of the video, share, and subscribe to help the channel grow. Your support means a lot to us. Number 15. Ancient Egypt, the Cradle of Civilization Our journey through African history begins with one of the most iconic civilizations the world has ever known, ancient Egypt. Situated along the fertile banks of the Nile River, Egypt emerged as one of the earliest centers of civilization around 3000 BCE. Its success was intimately tied to the Nile, which provided a lifeline of sustenance and transportation for the burgeoning society. The Egyptians developed a complex society with a hierarchical structure, advanced art and architecture, a system of hieroglyphic writing, and a rich religious tradition. The Old Kingdom, from 2700 to 2200 BCE, was the age of the Great Pyramids, exemplified by the construction of the Pyramid of Giza, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The pharaohs believed to be living gods held absolute power, while a sophisticated bureaucracy managed the state. The Middle Kingdom from 2055 to 1650 BCE brought further stability and cultural development. However, Egypt faced challenges during the Second Intermediate Period, marked by the invasion of the Hyksos, a foreign group that ruled parts of Egypt for a time. The New Kingdom from 1550 to 1077 BCE marked a resurgence of Egypt's power and territorial expansion. This period saw the reign of illustrious pharaohs like Hatshepsut, Akhenaten, and the famous Tutankhamun. The Egyptian Empire extended its influence into Nubia, modern Sudan, the Levant, and Canaan. It was during this time that the renowned religious text The Book of the Dead emerged, offering insights into Egyptian beliefs about the afterlife. The decline of Egypt's new kingdom occurred during the Third Intermediate Period, from 1077 to 656 BCE, as various foreign powers encroached on its territory. The Assyrians and Persians, among others, took control of Egypt in succession. Despite its gradual decline, ancient Egypt's contributions to science, art and architecture, along with its lasting cultural impact, endure in the modern world. Number 14. The Kingdom of Kush, Egypt's southern neighbour. While Egypt's history unfolded to the north, the Kingdom of Kush, located in what is now Sudan, was a powerful African civilization with close ties to its northern neighbour. The Kingdom of Kush emerged around 1070 BCE during Egypt's Third Intermediate Period. It was characterized by its own unique culture and language, as well as a fascination with Egyptian traditions and deities. Kushit rulers adopted Egyptian titles and built pyramids that emulated the style of their northern counterparts. One of the most remarkable periods in Kushite history was the 25th dynasty from 760 to 656 BCE when Kushite pharaohs ruled Egypt as the Nubian pharaohs. The most famous of these rulers was Paye, who conquered Egypt and established the 25th dynasty. During this period, the kingdom of Kush reached the zenith of its power and influence. The Kushites even engaged in successful military campaigns against the Assyrians in the Levant. However, this period of dominance in Egypt was short-lived. The Assyrians ultimately defeated the Kushite rulers and reasserted control over Egypt. The Kingdom of Kush continued to exist, albeit with reduced influence, for several more centuries. Number 13. The Carthaginian Empire, the Mediterranean powerhouse. Moving westward along the northern coast of Africa, 
we come to the great maritime empire of Carthage, situated in what is now Tunisia. Carthage was one of the most powerful and influential cities in the Mediterranean during its heyday. It was founded by Phoenician settlers in the 9th century BCE and quickly grew into a major trading hub and naval power, controlling a vast maritime empire that included parts of North Africa, Sicily, Sardinia and parts of modern-day Spain. The Carthaginians were skilled sailors and traders, establishing a network that spanned the Mediterranean. One of the defining episodes in Carthage's history was the series of conflicts with Rome known as the Punic Wars. The First Punic War, from 264 to 241 BCE, was primarily a struggle for control over Sicily. The Second Punic War, from 218 to 201 BCE, saw the brilliant Carthaginian general Hannibal Barca lead an audacious invasion of Italy, complete with his famous crossing of the Alps with war elephants. Hannibal's victories in Italy were remarkable, but he was ultimately defeated by Rome. The Third Punic War from 149 to 146 BCE resulted in the complete destruction of Carthage at the hands of Rome. The city was razed, its inhabitants killed or enslaved, and the territory was annexed by Rome. The fall of Carthage marked the end of a significant African power in the Mediterranean. Number 12. The Kingdom of Axum, the Christian Empire. Our journey takes us to the Horn of Africa, where the Kingdom of Axum, located in present-day Ethiopia and Eritrea, emerged as a formidable regional power. Axum's history is marked by its unique blend of indigenous culture and early Christianity. Axum's rise to prominence can be traced back to the first century CE. The kingdom's strategic location along the Red Sea allowed it to control key trade routes, particularly those that connected Africa with the Arabian Peninsula and the Roman Empire. The kingdom's wealth and power were closely tied innovation. The Benin Empire emerged around the 12th century CE and reached its peak during the 15th and 16th centuries. Its wealth and power were derived from trade in ivory, spices and other valuable commodities. One of the most significant developments in Axum's history was its conversion to Christianity. Axum is believed to be one of the earliest Christian kingdoms, with tradition holding that Christianity was introduced to the region in the 4th century CE. The conversion of Axum marked a pivotal moment in the history of Christianity and had a profound impact on the religious and cultural identity of the region. Axum reached its zenith during the 4th and 5th centuries CE when it extended its influence into the Arabian Peninsula, parts of modern-day Sudan and the Nile Valley. The kingdom's greatest ruler, King Ezana, played a pivotal role in shaping Axum's legacy. He is known for his inscriptions in Ge'ez, a Semitic language of Ethiopia, which provide important historical and religious insights. Despite its impressive achievements, the kingdom of Aksum began to decline in the 7th century CE, largely due to the rise of Islam and the Arab conquests in the region. The fall of Aksum resulted in the splintering of the kingdom into smaller states, while the legacy of its Christian heritage persisted in the Ethiopian and Eritrean Orthodox churches. Number 11. The Mali Empire, Land of Golden Learning. Continuing our journey westward, we encounter the Mali Empire, which was one of the most influential and wealthy empires in West Africa. The Mali Empire's rise to power was closely linked to its control over the trans-Saharan trade in gold and salt. Mali's origins can be traced back to the 9th century CE when it was part of the Ghana Empire. Mali gradually gained independence and emerged as a separate entity in the 13th century under the leadership of Sundiata Keita, its first ruler. The empire expanded rapidly, absorbing territories in modern-day Mali, Senegal, Ghana and Niger. The Mali Empire was renowned for its immense wealth derived primarily from the vast gold reserves found within its territory. The legendary city of Timbuktu, located on the southern edge of the Sahara Desert, became a thriving centre of trade, culture and learning. Timbuktu boasted numerous libraries and universities, attracting scholars and students from across the Islamic world. One of the most celebrated figures in the Mali Empire's history was Mansa Musa, who ruled during the 14th century. Mansa Musa was a devout Muslim who embarked on a famous pilgrimage to Mecca. During his journey, 
he distributed vast amounts of gold, earning him a reputation as one of the richest individuals in history. The Mali Empire's decline can be attributed to a combination of factors, including internal strife, external invasions, and the changing dynamics of trade routes. The empire weakened over the centuries and eventually disintegrated in the 16th century. Nevertheless, Mali's legacy endures, and it remains an important part of West African history and culture. Number 10. The Songhai Empire. The African Colossus. The Songhai Empire, located along the Niger River in West Africa, was one of the largest empires in African history. It succeeded the Mali Empire and reached its zenith during the 16th century. The rise of the Songhai Empire can be attributed to its leaders, particularly Sunni Ali and Askia Muhammad. Sunni Ali, the founder of the Sunni dynasty, expanded the empire's territory and consolidated his power through military conquests. His successor, Askia Muhammad, was a devout Muslim who brought stability and good governance to the empire. One of the most significant aspects of the Songhai Empire was its organization and administrative structure. The empire was divided into provinces, each with its governor, and a central government oversaw tax collection, trade, and the military. The Songhai capital, Gao, became a center of commerce and culture. The Songhai Empire reached its greatest territorial extent under Askia Muhammad. It controlled vast portions of West Africa, from the Atlantic coast to Lake Chad. The empire was characterized by a strong Islamic influence, with Timbuktu once again playing a vital role in the dissemination of Islamic scholarship. The Songhai Empire's downfall was precipitated by a series of events, including the Moroccan invasion in 1591, which saw the use of advanced firearms against Songhai forces. The empire fractured into smaller states, and its once great cities were reduced to ruins. Number 9. The Benin Empire. A Kingdom of Artistry. Travelling further south, we arrive at the Benin Empire, located in what is now Nigeria. The Benin Empire is renowned for its remarkable art and bronze casting, which reflected the kingdom's cultural achievements and artistic innovation. The Benin Empire emerged around the 12th century CE and reached its peak during the 15th and 16th centuries. Its wealth and power were derived from trade in ivory, spices and other valuable commodities. Prowess. The Benin Empire emerged around the 13th century and thrived through trade with neighbouring states and European powers, including the Portuguese. Its capital, the city of Benin, now called Benin City, was known for its impressive city walls, a network of earth and fortifications that extended for miles. These walls helped protect the city and its valuable trade routes. One of the most enduring legacies of the Benin Empire is its art particularly its bronze and brass sculptures. The kingdom's craftsmen produced intricate and realistic depictions of royal figures, animals, and scenes from daily life. These works of art have had a profound influence on African and Western art and are celebrated for their exquisite detail. The kingdom was characterized by a strong central authority under the Oba, who held both political and spiritual power. However, the Benin Empire's relations with European powers, particularly the British, took a turn for the worst in the late 19th century. A punitive expedition in 1897 resulted in the sacking of Benin City, the looting of its artistic treasures, and the exile of the Oba. The Benin Empire was effectively absorbed into the British Empire and became part of the British Protectorate of Southern Nigeria. While the empire itself ceased to exist, its cultural heritage and artistic achievements continue to be celebrated and preserved. Number 8. The Kingdom of Zimbabwe. Monumental Architecture. Our journey now takes us to the southern part of Africa, where we encounter the Kingdom of Zimbabwe. This kingdom is best known for its remarkable stone architecture, particularly the city of Great Zimbabwe, which was the capital of the kingdom. Great Zimbabwe was constructed between the 11th and 15th centuries, and was one of the largest stone structures in pre-colonial southern Africa. The city featured massive stone walls, towers, and a network of enclosures. The exact purpose of Great Zimbabwe remains a subject of debate among historians, but it is believed to have served as a centre of trade, religion, and governance. 
The kingdom of Zimbabwe's wealth came from its control of trade routes in gold, ivory and other valuable commodities. The city of Great Zimbabwe was strategically located along these trade routes, allowing the kingdom to amass considerable wealth. The kingdom also had a powerful army and maintained strong relations with neighbouring states. The decline of the Kingdom of Zimbabwe is still a matter of speculation. Various factors, including environmental changes, political instability and the exhaustion of resources, are believed to have contributed to the abandonment of Great Zimbabwe and the decline of the kingdom. Number 7. The Kingdom of Ghana, West Africa's Trade Hub Ghana, situated in what is now southeastern Mauritania and western Mali, was one of the earliest empires in West Africa. The kingdom was at the crossroads of key trans-Saharan trade routes and controlled the flow of gold and salt, making it a prominent economic and political centre. Ghana's origins can be traced back to around the 6th century CE. Its rulers, known as the Gus, facilitated trade by protecting the routes and levying taxes on passing caravans. This revenue allowed Ghana to build a strong military and establish a sophisticated system of government. The city of Kumbisaleh, the capital of Ghana, was a bustling urban centre. It featured two separate districts, one for Muslim traders and one for the king and his court. The kingdom's economic prosperity and relative stability attracted merchants and travellers from various regions. The decline of the Ghana Empire can be attributed to various factors, including internal conflicts, external invasions and shifts in trade routes. In the 11th century, the Almoravid Berbers, a North African Islamic dynasty, invaded Ghana and disrupted its power. The empire eventually fragmented into smaller states and ceased to exist as a unified entity. Number 6. The Kingdom of Aksum, Ancient African Civilization. Aksum, situated in what is now northern Ethiopia and Eritrea, was one of the most influential ancient African civilizations with a history dating back to the 1st century CE. It was known for its monumental obelisks and unique architectural style. The Aksumite Kingdom was a major trading power, connecting the Red Sea with the interior of Africa and the Mediterranean. It controlled trade in valuable commodities, such as ivory, gold and exotic spices. Aksum's wealth was reflected in its impressive stone ubis, some of which stood over 100 ft tall. The kingdom of Aksum is also significant in the history of Christianity. It is believed to be one of the earliest regions to adopt Christianity as the state religion during the 4th century CE. The introduction of Christianity played a vital role in shaping the culture and society of Aksum. The Aksumite Empire began to decline in the 7th century due to a combination of factors, including the rise of Islam, shifts in trade routes and environmental changes. By the 8th century, the kingdom had fragmented into smaller states. Number 5. The Zulu Kingdom, Resisting Colonialism Our journey now takes us to the southern part of Africa, where we encounter the Zulu Kingdom. The Zulus, a Bantu-speaking people, created a formidable empire in the early 19th century under the leadership of Shaka Zulu. Shaka Zulu, one of Africa's most prominent military leaders, introduced revolutionary changes in Zulu warfare. He developed the bullhorn battle formation and introduced the stabbing spear, which transformed the Zulu army into a formidable force. Under Shaka's leadership, the Zulus expanded their territory and became a major power in the region. The Zulu kingdom's rise to power coincided with the European colonization of Africa. The British and the Zulus clashed in the Anglo-Zulu War of 1879, which resulted in the defeat of the Zulu forces and the eventual colonisation of their lands. Despite this setback, the Zulu culture and identity endured, and the Zulu people remain a significant cultural and political force in modern South Africa. Number 4. The Ashanti Empire, Defenders of Independence The Ashanti Empire, located in what is now Ghana, was one of the most powerful pre-colonial states in West Africa. It is known for its rich culture, distinctive art and its role in resisting British colonialism. The Ashanti Empire emerged in the 18th century and its power was closely tied to the control of the gold trade in the region. The Ashanti people, known for their artistry, produced intricate gold jewellery and ceremonial objects that were highly valued. 
the Ashanti Empire had a well-organized government with a complex administrative system. The Ashanti king, known as the Asante Hene, held considerable power and was revered as a divine figure. The empire's military, known as the Ashanti army, was highly disciplined and played a crucial role in the empire's defense. One of the most famous episodes in the Ashanti Empire's history was the Ashanti-British Wars. The British, in their quest for colonial expansion, engaged in several conflicts with the Ashanti Empire in the 19th century. The Ashanti-British Wars were marked by resistance and military confrontations. Ultimately, the Ashanti Empire was defeated and became a British protectorate in the early 20th century. Nevertheless, the Ashanti culture and identity have persisted and the Ashanti people continue to play a significant role in the cultural and political landscape of Ghana. Number 3. The Oyo Empire, Yoruba Power The Oyo Empire, located in what is now southwestern Nigeria, was one of the most influential Yoruba states in pre-colonial West Africa. The empire is known for its centralized government, military organization, and unique religious practices. Oyo's origins can be traced to the 14th century with the establishment of the Oyo Ile city-state. The empire expanded through a combination of diplomacy and military conquest. The Oyo Empire was characterized by a strict hierarchy, with the Alafin as the supreme ruler and the Oyo Mesi, a council of chiefs, assisting in governance. The Oyo Empire controlled trade routes and collected taxes on various goods, including kola nuts and slaves. The empire was also a significant center for art and culture. The Yoruba people, known for their intricate wood carvings and religious practices, produced a rich artistic heritage. The Oyo Empire eventually faced internal strife, including factional disputes and challenges to its authority. External pressures, such as attacks from the Fon and British forces, contributed to the empire's decline in the 19th century. Number 2. The Kanem Bornu Empire, Saharan Power the Kanem Bornu Empire, located in the region around Lake Chad in modern-day Nigeria, Chad, Cameroon and Niger, was a significant power in the Sahel region. The empire's history is marked by its political organization and Islamic culture. The Kanem Bornu Empire emerged around the 9th century CE. Its ruling dynasty, the Safawa, established a centralized government and engaged in long-distance trade with other African states, the Arab world and Europe. The empire controlled key trade routes in the Sahel region, facilitating the exchange of goods and ideas. The Kanem Bornu Empire played a crucial role in the spread of Islam in the region. Islamic scholars and traders from North Africa and the Arab world visited the empire, contributing to its religious and cultural transformation. The empire reached its zenith in the 16th century under the rule of Mai Idris Aluma, who expanded its territory and introduced military innovations. However, the Kanem Bornu Empire eventually faced internal and external challenges, including invasions by the Sifawa dynasty and attacks by neighboring states. Conflicts inherited from the colonial era. The decline of the Kanem Bornu Empire occurred in the 19th century as European colonial powers began to assert their influence in Africa. The empire fragmented into smaller states and was gradually absorbed into the colonial territories of European powers. Number 1. The Swahili City-States, East African Trade Hubs On the eastern coast of Africa, we encounter the Swahili City-States, a network of independent trading communities that emerged as important players in the Indian Ocean trade. The Swahili Coast, an enchanting stretch of East Africa spanning from modern-day Somalia to Mozambique, stands as a testament to the rich tapestry of cultural exchange and maritime trade that characterized the region for centuries. Nestled along the azure waters of the Indian Ocean, the Swahili city-states of Kilwa, Mombasa and Zanzibar emerged as bustling hubs of commerce, drawing merchants, sailors and adventurers from far-flung corners of the world. At the heart of the Swahili coast's prosperity lay its strategic location, serving as a vital link between Africa, the Middle East, India and Southeast Asia. This geographical advantage facilitated the exchange of goods, ideas and people across vast distances, propelling the region into a flourishing centre of trade and cultural convergence. The vibrant mosaic of cultures that flourished along the Swahili coast 
bears testament to the diverse influences that shaped its identity. From the indigenous Bantu peoples to Arab traders, Persian merchants and Indian settlers, each group left an indelible mark on the cultural landscape, weaving a complex tapestry of traditions, languages and beliefs. Central to the cultural synthesis of the Swahili coast was the emergence of Swahili language and culture, a dynamic fusion of linguistic elements from Bantu, Arabic, Persian and Indian origins. This unique blend reflected not only the cosmopolitan nature of the region, but also its ability to adapt and evolve in response to the ever-changing currents of trade and interaction. Trade lay at the heart of the Swahili city-state's prosperity, with lucrative commodities such as gold, ivory, spices and slaves fueling economic exchange across continents. The bustling markets of Kilwa, Mombasa and Zanzibar buzzed with activity as merchants haggled over exotic goods, while bustling harbours welcomed ships laden with treasures from distant lands. However, alongside the wealth and opulence that characterised the Swahili coast, darker legacies loomed large. The trade in human lives, particularly the Trans-Saharan and Indian Ocean slave trades, cast a shadow over the region's history, leaving a painful legacy of exploitation and suffering. Religion also played a significant role in shaping the cultural landscape of the Swahili coast, with the spread of Islam leaving an indelible mark on the region. Introduced by Arab traders and missionaries, Islam took root among the Swahili city-states, influencing everything from architecture and art to law and social norms. In essence, the Swahili coast stands as a testament to the power of cross-cultural exchange and maritime trade in shaping the destiny of nations. Its legacy continues to resonate today, serving as a reminder of the enduring bonds that connect diverse peoples and cultures across the vast expanse of the Indian Ocean. The decline of the Swahili city-states can be attributed to a combination of factors, including the Portuguese arrival in the 16th century, which disrupted the established trade routes as well as the growth of other European powers in the Indian Ocean region. Over time, the city-states lost their prominence in the global trade network. The decline of African empires marked a pivotal moment in the continent's history, with the onset of European colonialism ushering in an era of profound upheaval and transformation. For centuries, various African empires and kingdoms had thrived, encompassing vast territories and wielding significant political and economic influence. However, internal conflicts, external pressures, and the disruptive forces of the transatlantic slave trade had already weakened many of these empires by the 19th century. The advent of European colonialism in Africa brought about seismic shifts in power dynamics as European powers sought to assert their dominance and exploit the continent's resources for their own economic gain. The Scramble for Africa, a frenzied period of colonisation that unfolded in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, saw European nations aggressively compete for control over African territories, often through military conquest, diplomatic manoeuvres or outright coercion. The partitioning of Africa by European powers during this period disregarded existing African political structures and boundaries leading to arbitrary divisions that often cut across ethnic, linguistic and cultural lines. This arbitrary division sowed the seeds of future conflict and instability, as it created artificial states with little regard for the diverse identities and aspirations of the African peoples inhabiting them. Colonial rule brought with it a host of profound and enduring consequences for Africa. Economically, European colonial powers exploited Africa's natural resources, often through coercive labour practices and extractive industries that prioritised the interests of the colonial metropoles over the welfare of the African populations. Socially, colonialism disrupted traditional systems of governance and social organisation, often exacerbating existing tensions and inequalities within African societies. Moreover, colonialism left a lasting imprint on African culture and identity as European colonial powers imposed their languages, religions and cultural norms on indigenous populations, often at the expense of indigenous languages, belief systems and cultural practices. This cultural imposition fueled resistance and resentment among many African communities, 
laying the groundwork for future movements of decolonization and national liberation. The legacy of European colonialism continues to reverberate across Africa to this day, shaping contemporary political, economic and social realities on the continent. While the era of formal colonial rule has come to an end, its legacies of inequality, underdevelopment and institutionalised injustice persist, underscoring the ongoing struggle for self-determination and equitable development across Africa. In sum, the decline of African empires and the onset of European colonialism marked a pivotal juncture in the continent's history, setting the stage for centuries of exploitation, resistance and ultimately the quest for independence and sovereignty. Understanding this complex legacy is essential for grappling with the challenges and opportunities facing Africa in the 21st century. The partition of Africa was often arbitrary and disregarded traditional borders and ethnic divisions. It resulted in the loss of sovereignty for many African states and a long era of foreign domination. Colonial rule had a devastating impact on African societies. European powers exploited Africa's resources imposed new forms of governance and established a system of forced labour. African cultures and traditions were often suppressed or marginalised, and resistance to colonial rule was met with harsh repression. The legacy of colonialism is still evident in modern Africa, with many nations grappling with the consequences of the past. The struggle for independence, which gained momentum in the mid-20th century, ultimately led to the decolonization of Africa and the emergence of newly independent states. The mid-20th century witnessed a wave of African countries gaining independence from colonial rule. This period of decolonization saw the emergence of numerous new nations, each facing its unique set of challenges. African nations faced the daunting task of nation-building, which involved establishing political institutions, developing economies, and forging national identities. Many countries also grappled with ethnic and tribal conflicts inherited from the colonial era. Divisions inherited from the colonial era posed significant challenges to national unity. During this time, various African leaders and movements played pivotal roles in the struggle for independence and the subsequent shaping of their nations. Figures like Kwame Nkrumah in Ghana, Jomo Kenyatta in Kenya, Patrice Lumumba in Congo, and Nelson Mandela in South Africa became iconic figures in the struggle for African self-determination. The period following independence also brought challenges, including the legacy of colonialism, economic underdevelopment, political instability, and external pressures from the Cold War superpowers. Some African nations experienced political turmoil, coups, and conflicts as they sought to establish stable governments. In recent decades, Africa has witnessed a wide range of developments. Some nations have made significant progress in areas such as economic growth, education and health. However, many countries continue to face challenges related to political stability, corruption, poverty and conflict. The history of Africa is vast and woven together by the stories of numerous empires, civilizations, and cultures. From the splendours of ancient Egypt to the powerful empires of Mali and Songhai, from the artistic achievements of Benin, to the religious legacy of Aksum, the African continent has a rich and diverse history that has left an indelible mark on the world. A journey through time reveals the resilience and adaptability of African societies as they navigated the challenges of change and external pressures. While the decline of many African empires was often intertwined with the onset of colonialism, the post-colonial era ushered in new opportunities and challenges as African nations sought to build independent identities and address long-standing issues. As we conclude our journey through the great African empires, we are left with a profound appreciation for the diverse and dynamic history of the African continent. The legacy of these empires endures in the cultures, traditions and identities of modern Africa, and they continue to inspire those who seek to understand the depth and complexity of the African experience. This brings us to the end of this video. Tell us what you think in the comments section as we are always interested in your thoughts. As always, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel and share our videos to let more people know the truth about blacks and to hear their own part of the narratives. Thanks for watching.